Hi, my name is Brian Smith. In this video, I'm going to cover the RHEL 8 Stratus Storage Management Tool. Stratus is designed to make managing storage easier in RHEL. It supports thin provisioning and snapshots. Stratus is made up of three types of objects. The first is block devices. These are things like physical disk, LVM logical volumes, multipath devices, MD-RAID devices, etc. Next is the pool object. These are one or more block devices that have been pooled together. The third and final object is file systems. These are XFS file systems that are thinly provisioned and don't have a fixed size and they're automatically increased in size as needed. To get started we will first install the Stratus D and Stratus Desk CLI packages. Once those are installed next we will enable the Stratus D service with a systemctl command and then next we're going to run lsblk to identify the devices we'll be working with. In this example we'll be using dev VDB, VDC, and VDD which reach 10 gig. We'll create a pool object by running stratus pool create the name of the pool which is test pool and then the two block devices we want to add to the pool. Next we'll show the command to add a disk to the pool after it's been created. We'll run a stratus pool add dash data the name of the pool which is test pool and then the block device dev VDD. Next we'll run a Stratus block dev list. This will show all the block devices that Stratus is managing. If we run a Stratus pool list, this will show a list of the pools in Stratus. You can see that we have one pool um, that's 30 gigs. Next we'll run Stratus file system create the name of the pool and the name of the file system. This will create a new file system within this pool. And we're going to create a, an additional file system. Um, so we'll have a test file system 1 and a test file system 2 in this test pool. Next we'll run a Stratus file system list. This will show a list of all the file systems that Stratus is managing. And then what we'll do next is create a mount point. We'll do a make dir slash test file system 1 and a make dir slash test file system 2. And then we'll mount our Stratus file systems with a mount command. These are available under slash stratus, slash the pool name, slash the file system. And then we're going to mount it at the slash test file system 1 mount point that we just created. And we'll do the same for test file system 2 so that they're both mounted. Next we'll run df-h and grep for our test file systems. One thing you'll notice is that df reports the file systems are one terabyte in size. This is because stratus file systems do not have a fixed size and they use thin provisioning. So Stratus will automatically resize these file systems and grow the space as needed. If we want to see how much space uh, is available in the pool, we can run a Stratus pool and see the pool size and how much is being used. So in this case we have a 30 gig pool and 1.12 gigabytes is being used. If we run Stratus file system, we can see how much space is being used by each file system. Each of these you can see is using 546 megabytes. Next we'll CD into the test file system 1 file system and we'll create a 1 gigabyte file with a dd command. Then we'll run stratus pool to see um, the size change. So you can see that we're now reporting 2 gigabytes is being used. And if we run stratus file system, we can see that test file system 1 is now using 1.53 gigabytes of space. Next we're going to look at stratus snapshots. To start we'll create a important file named important file. and then we will create a snapshot with the stratus file system snapshot and then we'll put the name of the pool test pool put the name of the file system test file system and the name of the snapshot which is test file system 1-snapshot once we run that the snapshot has been created and we will run a stratus file system to list out the file systems and you can see that the snapshot is listed there as the third file system Snapshots can be uh, easily mounted. Um, we'll demonstrate that by running a make dir test file system 1 snapshot to create a new mount point. And then we'll mount that snapshot just like we did the file systems previously. We'll run mount slash stratus slash test pool slash test file system 1 snapshot and then mount it on the test file system 1 snapshot mount point. Next we'll cd into that mount point, do an ls al, and you can see we have the two files there. And if we cat important file, we can see the contents of that file. Next, we'll go ahead and unmount that snapshot. And we'll demonstrate what you need to do to roll back to this snapshot. 
So we'll cd into our test file system one, and we're gonna delete that important file. So we'll do an ls minus al, and then we'll do rm important file. And do an ls minus al again to show that it's gone. So at this point we need to restore that snapshot to bring back important file. To do that, we'll start by unmounting uh, test file system one. And then we're actually going to completely remove test file system one by running stratus file system destroy, the name of the pool, test pool, and the name of the file system, test dash file system one. So at this point, that file system has been removed. Now we will run stratus file system snapshot, the name of the pool, test pool, the name of the file system, test file system one snapshot, and the new name, test file system one. So what we're doing here is actually creating a new file system, test file system one, from the snapshot. Next, we will go ahead and mount that file system. We'll run mount slash stratus slash test pool slash test file system one, and we'll mount it at the slash test file system one mount point. We'll cd into that mount point, and we'll do an ls minus al, and you can see the important file is there again, and if we cat that file, we can see the contents are there. So we have effectively restored this snapshot. I hope you get a chance to try out Stratus and the Rel8 beta. Thanks for watching the video, and I hope you have a great day today.